do subscribe to ikeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos so friends in the last lecture we have studied that what is bentoff factor and based on that we are now deriving an equation which is based on a relation with the degree of dissociation and bentoff factor so let us see how can we derive that so students as you know because of the association and dissociation that is the main abnormal quality that takes place during when solute is dissolved in solvent in most of the case it is done by electrolytes and it happens in case of electrolyte because this electrolyte undergoes dissociation usually so because of this the molecular mass also changes of for the solute and this creates an abnormality in the colligative property so let us find that what is degree of dissociation which is related to the bentoff factor so let's start with an electrolyte so consider an electrolyte ax by which undergoes dissociation to form x moles of a m plus i and y numbers of b n minus i so therefore this is the representation that is given when it undergoes dissociation in equilibrium that is ax by which is a electrolyte it undergoes dissociation to form x moles of a m plus and y moles of b n minus so let us study the further part let us denote alpha as degree of dissociation so therefore consider at equilibrium out of the original m moles of electrolyte m alpha moles get dissociated this thing let me explain you suppose if i consider m moles of the electrolyte that is ax b1 because it is an electrolyte it will dissociate but it is not necessary that every mole of the electrolyte will get dissociated few of the electrolyte will be as it is while few will be dissociated while the few will be remains undissociated so these are the factors that will remain with us so let us see so the number of moles of solute which will undergo dissociation will be the m minus m alpha m is the original value or original number of moles of the electrolyte minus m alpha this m alpha is nothing but the part of the electrolyte that is undergone in dissociation so what is left with us the left part with us in the solution is the undissociated electrolyte and what is that that is m1 minus alpha so therefore since m1 minus alpha has not been dissociated so what else is remained in the solution the dissociated part and the dissociated part will be related to the electrolyte which has been dissociated in the terms of ions like a m plus and b n minus so let us see and let us give them a particular value or a particular equation so that we could solve the given equation so the dissociated molecules of electrolyte will produce x moles of m alpha and of which is of a m plus and y m alpha moles of b n minus so this is the part that will be getting dissociated or this is the part of the electrolyte that will be dissociated in the solution for cation and for an anion so overall the particles that are present in the solution when an electrolyte is undergone dissociation in a solution not completely but till an extent that's why we have represented degree of dissociation as alpha and with the help of that let us see what is remained in the solution 
So hence the total number of moles present in the solution will be empty. This empty means the number of the total number of moles of solute. Empty means the total number of moles of solute, which is equals to m1 minus alpha. This m1 minus alpha is the particle which was not dissociated. Plus x moles of m alpha, which was dissociated by the cation that is a m plus plus y m alpha this is the particle of the anion that is b n minus that has been dissociated so this all equation can be written as m by removing m as common 1 minus alpha plus alpha into x plus alpha into y so we can also not take n common of alpha that is degree of dissociation as m 1 plus x plus y minus 1 alpha okay and just for inconvenience what we have did is we have converted this x plus y into n bar x was the number of moles of the cation while the y was the number of moles of nn so this makes a total number of moles of that cation or nnn which means the electrolyte so therefore mt is equals to m 1 minus n bar minus 1 into alpha but recently we have also studied what is van t hoff factor in van t hoff factor we know that van t hoff factor which is denoted by a small i is nothing but the observed number of mole of the solute divided by the theoretical number of moles of solute so therefore the observed number of moles of solute which is present in the solution right now with us is empty divided by m so the value of empty was being calculated as or was being uh, derived in the form of m1 plus n bar minus 1 into alpha divided by the m so therefore this m and m will get cancelled out so the thing which is left with us is Vector factor i is equals to 1 plus n bar minus 1 into alpha. So this can be also written as 1 minus this can be also written as i minus 1 is equals to n bar minus 1 into alpha. Therefore, alpha, which is degree of dissociation, is i minus 1 divided by n bar minus 1. So this is the equation that we have proved right now. So this was a relation between Van Hoff factor and a degree of dissociation for an electrolyte present in the solution which undergoes dissociation. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have liked this video and please share this with your friends and don't forget to subscribe egidan.com. Thank you so much.